So, okay, wonderful everyone. I think I'm going to begin uh, speaking now. Can you hear me okay? Yes, okay, great. Um, hello and welcome. My name is Jill Hawthorne and I'm the Associate Director of Family Programs and I am a proud Pitzer alumna. First, I want to introduce my, introduce my colleagues from the engagement team who are on the call as well. When I say your name, please wave your hand. Shannon Spaccarelli, Brooke Butler, Carolina Van Zee, Tihu Tanzir Ahmed, Yolanda Davis Corey. And I know that there's someone else in there. So um, I think Alicia just joined so she could say hi. Thank you all. It takes a full team to run something like this. Um, before I go any further too, I wanna make this a little more social and informative for everybody. And so I want to ask if everyone would edit their uh, virtual name play, their profile and add your city and state or country. So we all will get to know a little bit more about each other just by um, being able to see our Zoom squares. Um, for example, mine says Jill Hawthorne, Pomona, California. Okay, so if, if you can do that, you don't have to, but again, um, it'd be a great way to see where everyone's coming from. And there are still people coming in, I see. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. This family and student reception is part of a series of virtual and in-person events over the summer to welcome the class of 2027. This event is tailored to uh, this tailored to connect incoming students and families with other new students and families. And speaking of the new students, I want to share just a few statistics with you about your class. As of today, there are 279 students in your class, and we had a 15.9 admitted rate. There's 14.8% of the class's first generation, 46.6% are students of color. 8% international students, 42.3 in state, 57.7 .7 out of state, with an, a total of 38 states represented by the class and 26 countries represent, re, represented by the class. The top three intended majors are environment, environmental analysis, psychology, and political studies. And I, we know there's so much more exciting things to learn about you as you make your way to Pitzer. Our purpose is tonight is to highlight Pitzer programs and resources for students and families. We will also go over the logistics of family orientation and move-in with a Q&A period for your questions. Now I would like to in turn to introduce President Designate Strom Thacker and his wife, Isabel, to invite both of them to the virtual microphone. Thank you, Jill. Uh, it's great to be here with everybody. Uh, nice to see uh, a good crowd turnout for our, our virtual session here. Um, my wife, Isabel, and I are, are here and delighted to join you. I'll introduce her a little bit more uh, later, but I thought I'd also tell you a little bit about myself uh, and my path that brought me to this room, because I'm as new as you and your students are. So um, I'm just coming into Pitzer. As Jill said, I'm the president designate. Uh, so I start on the job July 1st. Um, and I'm coming from Union College in Schenectady, New York. Uh, that's where we are now. We're on the East Coast, uh, getting ready, uh, planning our move and, and doing all our organizing and packing. Uh, as I like to say, we're really excited about the move, just not the moving. Um, that's the least fun part of this job, uh, of, this, uh, of this task anyway. So um, I just want to uh, echo Jill's thanks and thank her and the rest of the team for making this happen. And again, thanking uh, all of you for coming and the students especially. Um, there's a big group on this uh, on this uh, meeting tonight, and there's another larger group behind them. So if at any time any questions come up and you're wondering whom to ask, just come to one of the folks on this call. And if we don't know the answer, we'll get you to the person who can. Um, and we'll answer as many questions of yours as we can tonight as well. So um, welcome to the Pitzer family. I'm excited to be joining it with you. I think you'll find from, from what I've heard from uh, everybody that I've talked to so far and already feeling it myself to a degree as well is 
that once you join this family, it'll be a part of you for life. Um, and I have experienced a certain degree of that myself because I'm a Pomona alum. So I graduated from Pomona in 1988, and I have a strong affection uh, and affiliation with Claremont, uh, and even with Pitzer as well, uh, because I actually ate several meals at Pitzer when I was a Pomona student, took a class there uh, at Pitzer, which is one of the great things that your students will be able to do. And, and to be honest, students do that more now than they did back in my day. Um, there's a lot more um, sort of cross-fertilization across the campuses than there was then, but one of my one of my favorite facts about my time at Pitzer was or Pomona. There I go. I'm already converted. Um, was that the class that I took at Pitzer? I have taught myself as a professor, as a faculty member, for my entire career. In fact, I've taught it more than any other class. Um, and the faculty member who taught it um, retired sometime in the last few years, is, and is still in the area. I look forward to to connecting with him and maybe comparing some notes about how our our courses evolved over time. So. Um, you know, I'm excited to come home. I'm excited to be in Claremont again, um, but I'm also just super excited to join Pitzer. Um, and again, I think you'll find the community is a special one, but also the mission uh, and the vision for the college. And the way I like to, to think about it and describe it to folks is that where Pitzer has been for its whole existence for these last 60 years in promoting social justice, environmental sustainability, student engagement, interdisciplinary approaches to the world's most challenging problems. Um, that's where Pitzer has been for a long time. And the world is kind of coming around to that perspective. And I think in many ways, looking to Pitzer for leadership and you as students and, and uh, the families of the students really have an opportunity to capitalize that, on that in this wonderful, small, tight-knit community, uh, but that is still linked to those critical approaches and key problems in the world today. So I'm a little bit more than a little jealous uh, that you're starting on this journey because the journey that you're starting now really has shaped my entire life. Um, and in fact, when I was shortly after graduating from Pomona, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And um, Isabel said to me, she said, I can tell you really miss being in college. You should do that for your career. Uh, and it turned out she was absolutely right. And I've done it and, and absolutely loved it and adored it. So um, again, I'm very excited to, to be joining you. Before coming to Union, I've been here for seven years. Uh, before that, I spent 20 years at Boston University. Uh, and before that, uh, my first faculty position was at a university in Mexico City called ITAM. Um, so if any of you are Spanish speakers, you're welcome to uh, communicate with either of us in Spanish or English. Um, we're happy to um, speak in either of those two languages. Unfortunately, we don't have any others, but, but we're good on those two. So I wish you all the very best as you start down this journey. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm pretty um, envious of it. Um, I'll introduce my wife a little bit more now, um, but um, Isabel and I, we actually met on a study abroad program in Madrid, Spain, uh, when we were both juniors in college. Pomona at the time shared a program with Middlebury, which is, which is where Isabel went. And um, so I would just encourage the students in the, uh, in the audience and the families to uh, keep that option and, and that opportunity in mind. It was literally life-changing for me. Um, in addition to meeting my future spouse, uh, it also really is where I fell in love with the Spanish language, with conducting original research uh, and sort of thinking about the world in a much uh, broader way. So I would encourage you all to, to think about those and other ways that you might get involved in experiential learning as well, which is one of Pitcher's real strengths. So um, Isabel uh, has spent her entire career pursuing missions very similar to what is important to Pitzer uh, in social justice work in particular. She's an attorney who's assisted clients in finding humanitarian relief in immigration and other legal matters. Um, and you'll find her very engaged with Pitzer uh, and I'm sure you'll see her around campus quite a bit. So I'll, I'll turn it over to her very briefly to say hi. Hello, I'm happy to be here. I'm looking forward to being out in Claremont and getting to know Pitzer better and, and spending time with all of y'all. So thank you. So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, if either of us can be of any help or any of the other staff on the call can be of any help at any time, uh, please do let us know. And I look forward to seeing you all in Claremont. Thanks for coming. And we'll be here for the rest of the call, but um, just wanted to say those, those words of thanks at the outset.
Excellent. Thank you so much, President Designate Thacker and Isabel. So nice to have you here. Um, before I move to our program, I want to give just a little shout out to members of our Family Leadership Council who are here. I'm going to have them wave their hand when they say hello. If you are interested um, in the, fa um, the Family Leadership Council or just being active, you can um, fill out our volunteer form that's on our website. Um, and it, we'll put it into the chat too. Just so you know, it's super easy to get in touch with us and you can um, be part of Family Leadership if you like. The family Leadership Family Association, which you all are, but um, Family Leadership Council and Volunteer Activities. Um, so um, I'd like to have Linda Juan um, raise her hand, wave. Thank you, Linda. Ban uh, Chen, raise her hand and wave, please. Hallie Croner, please wait, raise your hand and wave. And Ekta Champsey, um, please wave your hand and wave. And if, I, if anyone else came on the call after, please um, unmic and introduce yourself. Okay. Okay, thanks. So I want to, at this time, invite Elena Session Goins, Associate Dean of Students and Director of Campus Life, to the virtual microphone. Hello all. Um, so as Jill said, I am Elena. I have been at Pitzer College for 12 years. Um, although I'm currently the Associate Dean of Students and Director of Campus Life, I started at Pitzer um, as a residence hall director, first living in Mead Hall with all of our juniors and seniors. And then I moved into uh, West, East and Scandera, um, just working with our sophomores. And uh, Pitzer is my family, um, much like Strom talked about. Um, it has become family to me, and um, that is why I've stuck around for 12 years. Um, one of my greatest joys, quite frankly, um, professionally, is getting to meet families and new students as they transition into Pitzer. Uh, my most recent position before this was as the Director of Student Activities and Orientation, and so um, my team, my current team, um, gets to plan the new student orientation program. Um, all of our new students and families should have gotten, you know, their first communication about, you know, getting all your forms in and, um, you know, uh, filling out the form for orientation adventure and for housing. There'll be a lot of more information shared throughout the summer with you all um, about selecting a first year seminar and um, doing health insurance information and any disability accommodations. Um, so the summer is definitely full of a lot of data collection for us wanting to make sure that we're prepared for you all to get to Pitzer in August. Um, and then once all of the students get here and the families get here, um, we will for sure have a wonderful orientation program for you with the goals of bringing our new students together in community with both fellow new students, as well as with upperclassmen students. Um, we introduce our, all of our new students over a 10 day period to the academic kind of curriculum and get people registered for classes. Um, we send them all out on three day orientation trips um, all around Southern California. Um, for, I'm assuming you all know, but you, know, you can do backcountry trips, you can do camping trips, or you can do local trips that stay on campus and just go out locally into the community. Um, in my 12 years of working at Pitzer, students have consistently said that the orientation program really helps them with their transition to Pitzer. Transitioning to college and transitioning away from home can be really hard. There's nothing like your own home. And so being able to spend you know, a, a week and a half with um, both current Pitzer students as well as staff um, and faculty really has consistently um, and historically helped with that transition. Um, and then once you, you know, kind of get settled and you get your classes and you begin to learn from your peers about, what, you know, what's it like to be a Pitzer student, there's a lot of ways to get involved. Um, obviously, our, our, our Pits, our Pitzer campus is global and the, and, the, and the seven C's are global. We have students coming internationally from around our country as well as locally. And so um, we have all kinds of student organizations that students can join. They can join student orgs around, you know, different identities, around common interests, around ways to be physically well and fit. 
there's a lot of ways to get involved. You're going to hear from two of my colleagues really shortly in career services and in residence life, um, and they're going to talk more about those experiences. But in addition to the orientation experience, um, the Office of Student Affairs, we um, support students around like if they're having a hard time um, with mental health and, and wellness. Um, our Pitzer Academic Support Services that does disability accommodations. Um, we do, as I said, career services and kind of like life planning, if you will. Um, and then we also, you know, serve in the on-call capacity. I think Letty's going to talk a little bit more about that, but um, campus doesn't necessarily turn off. And so there's always a way for students to get a hold of our on-call team, both at the student level as well as the professional level. Um, and so that's part of the the student affairs responsibilities as well. Um, and then Pomona, Pitzer Pomona Athletics um, is another part of our division of student affairs. You know, we, we love our student athletes. They're extremely accomplished as athletes. They're also extremely accomplished as students. There's, um, I think we just won an award with like the highest GPA in NCAA, Pitzer and Pomona. And so um, the student affairs office is there for your students. We are um, supportive of people that want to get involved and we have, we're supportive of, of students that just need a little extra support. Um, we also liaise a lot with our um, TCCS, the Claremont College's services, resources, everywhere from Montsour um, Counseling Center to student health, our identity-based centers, um, our Empower Center, which supports our students that um, have had, you know, Title IX, you know, concerns and want support, um, as well as many other things like the library, the chaplains, um, and whatnot. So student affairs is definitely going to be a point of contact if ever, anybody ever has questions about your students kind of out of, out of the classroom um, experience at Pitzer. And our hope is that all students begin to feel like uh, Pitzer is home for them. Um, so that's a little bit about student affairs and a little bit about your new students um, transition experience. So thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, now I would like to um, invite Leticia Romo uh, to the virtual microphone. Yeah, thank you. And thank you everyone for being here. As um, was mentioned, my name is Leticia Romo. She, her, hers are my pronouns. I'm uh, the Associate Dean of Students and Director of Residence Life and Conference Services. So um, I just wanna take a moment before I dive into what I have to share and just say thank you um, for the students who are coming and joining us in August and also for the parents who are entrusting their students and their education um, with us. I can tell you that not only myself, my colleagues and our staffs are really excited to um, welcome in our new class um, we do this with knowing very well that this is a moment of transition, but also a lot of growth um, as they continue on in their time here. Um, I know for my staff in particular working in residence life, uh, we really want to help create an environment where our students feel like they come home at the end of the day or in the, in the mornings when they're going to class or whatnot. And so um, we do have a professional staff member in each of our um, area. So our first year area has a resident director and then they have a staff of resident assistants who really focus on building community and building community looks very different for everyone. And so it's everything from, you know, going to sporting events to doing alternative um, weekend night events, right? So having ice cream socials, a movie night, uh, uh, arts and crafts, whatever that looks like in an effort for us to make sure that our students feel like they have a place here. And so, um, so I say that because probably what you all and what I really wanna say before we go from there is your students should have access and students, you should have already gone to your portal and uh, filled out your housing application. Now, if there's one word of advice that I'm gonna share, and I will say this every year, um, it is so important that our students fill out their housing application as honestly and truthful as they can. So parents, sometimes that means you can't be there when they're filling it out because they don't wanna tell you that they like their messy rooms, right? Or they don't wanna tell you that they ain't going to bed at 9 p.m. Um, and But it's really important that you be as honest and as, um, as reflective on what's gonna make your student or you as a student be successful in matching because that's what we use, that survey, that's what we use to find your roommate. And I can tell you that there's two instances that 
sometimes we can tell that it was a parent that filled it out because they'll say my my student is very clean and my student um you know goes to bed early and wakes up very early um and then we match them with someone who actually is that way and then we have to go in and try to <laughs> fix this situation and in a very um, developmental approach. So we do have them talk out their roommate agreements type of stuff, but I can tell you that we can avoid all that if we just answer that very honestly. Um, but you know, sometimes things will happen and um, and I, I hope that your student, I hope that you all know that it's it these things are normal as, as our students begin to understand who they are, as they begin to understand who they are as roommates, as friends, as, as just individuals. And so if at any point there is a need, um, something's happening, or you just want someone to check in on your student, please do not hesitate to contact us. I would much rather have you sharing um, you know, all the information that you wanna share with us and having us um, connect with your, with your student, our residents. Now we won't be able to tell you what happens. I won't be able to tell you um, what the conversation is like or what the solution was like. Um, but I promise you that one, either myself or my staff or one of my colleagues will be doing our, um, our darnest to make sure that we connect with your student and connect them with the, um, the right resources for them. So uh, I, I just wanna make sure that I'm very clear with that. I know that there's a lot of, a lot of my colleagues are parents also. And so we really understand that this is, sometimes this transition is as much of a process for our parents as it is for our students. And so we'll try to um, help in that transition as well too. Um, yeah, so just some important dates for you all to keep in mind. The, the application should be open now for housing. Uh, I think, I believe that opened at the beginning of June and that will close at the end of June. The first week of July is when we will do some virtual like opportunities for your student and to meet other students to see if they're able to find someone that they connect with that they want to live with in the in the academic year. Now, if they don't find someone or if they're like, you know what, I don't want to attend or I'm, you know, I'm going to I'm going to put my name in the hat and see who I get paired up with. That's OK, too. But this is for those students who maybe want to plan that a little bit more and want to know who their roommate is um, and uh, to get have them meet other people and get to know others. So. Um, that'll happen the first week of July, and then um, you'll your student will be given about a week to be able to let us know if they did find somebody that they want to room with, and if they didn't, again, that's okay. A week after that closes, I believe it's the 21st of July, is when we'll um, contact all of our residents and let them know where they've been placed. So, so that those are the important dates. If something happens after the selection and you know, do you need to look into another space or maybe you're nervous about what this looks like, we're here to help or, and, and we're, all you have to do is give us a call or shoot us an email at housing at pitzer.edu. So um, my staff and I check that email and we're ready to go. We're excited to have you all here with us on, on check-in day for orientation, you'll check in into the residence halls it's really important after you find out who the roommates are that you connect with your roommate because you don't need three refrigerators or two refrigerators sometimes. Um, so really thinking about how do you make that space what you want that space to be? Do you want it to be more relaxing? Do you want it to be very um, focused on academics or whatever that looks like you and your roommate can uh, figure that out together prior to coming to campus. But if you do come to campus, we have a re-room which is uh, things that our upperclassmen have, have kind of donated back to our future residents who might want to use it. So refrigerators, microwaves, uh, sometimes sofas, you name it, it's probably in their lamps, fun, funky lamps too. So um, I think that's all I have for now. I'm sure there's gonna be some questions that I'd be happy to answer, uh, but yeah, thank you all and see you in August. Thank you very much, Leticia. Um, at this time, I am, would like to um, welcome Brad Tharp um, in Career Services, who can introduce himself. Go ahead and bring yourself to the virtual microphone. Thanks so much, Jill. Hi, folks. As Jill said, my name is Brad Tharp. I'm an Associate Dean of Students and Director of the Career Center. I have been at Pitzer for eight years and I've been in Southern California for 11. 
As you may have guessed already, Southern California took away my hair, but not my accent. So I have carried that uh, forward and will probably do so. So as others have said, let me just add my voice to say, we are so very glad that you've chosen to join the Pitzer community. And we will look forward to welcoming you as students and as families, uh, hopefully in 3D in just a few weeks. So I'm gonna do just a couple of quick things. Um, first, let me say this to the students on this call, over the past few months, you have made a very important life decision in consultation with your families based on your values and your goals out of the communities that you're a part of, you've made the important decision to come to Pitzer. And we are very glad you've done that. Please know the Career Center, our team of folks, and many, many faculty and uh, staff members here, we're here to help you make your next set of important life decisions. Where will you spend your summers in internships or research, uh, service in some ways? Um, what will you look to do after you graduate? So please know here at Pitzer, we take a very holistic approach to that process. You may be coming into this community saying, this is, this is what I wanna do for a career. This is how I wanna apply my gifts and talents into the future. Um, some of you may be coming in like, like I was, and I think like most people where you really aren't sure quite what direction you'll head in. Please know that many of us are here to help you be in an intentional process to explore and make those decisions for yourself and, and then help you achieve whatever goals you set for yourself. So that's really our, our, our goal here. Um, so I'll just simply say that we've got a whole team of people and in many ways, a whole community of people who are here to support you in that process. Uh, let me quickly say to the parents and family members on this call, I'm with you. My oldest child is headed off to college in just a few weeks. We have no clue what that's going to look like. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, when you're here on campus, if you get to come and you want to go get a drink and talk about that, if I've got some time, I'm up for it. Let's let's make that happen. So what I want to do today is very, very briefly, I'm going to show you three quick slides. And they're going to be about what might be some of the pressing concerns you would have when you show up. Um, let me say right up front, we want career exploration and planning to be a part of your entire Pitzer process. We know your first few weeks here, you need to get accustomed to your classes. You need to make new friends. You need to explore Pitzer and the Claremont Colleges. We want to support you in that. That said, I want to give you a couple of things to just think about and maybe prepare for before you come to Pitzer. Does that sound okay with everybody? Good, I love nods, thumbs up, warms my heart, folks. Thank you very much, helps me. So let me very briefly um, do this. If you are interested in working on campus, and I've done the slides just so you can do a, a screenshot or something if you want to, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. On-campus jobs will get posted on Handshake. Handshake is our primary career services management platform for all of the Claremont colleges. So that'll be something for you to get to know. If you just Google Pitts of Career Services, right on our homepage is a link to that. Let me say right now, and I may say this again in a minute, please don't try to log into Handshake until the very beginning of August. We will send a met, we will let you know when an account has been set up in that system for you. If you actually try to log in before that, it kind of throws the system off a little bit. So please hang tight. You're, you're all here today because you're go-getters. I love that and appreciate it, but just please hang, hang tight to the beginning of August to log into Handshake. Uh, one of the main things is um, to work on campus or off campus, you will need what's called I-9 documents. And these are documents to show that you're eligible to work in the US. I won't go through a whole list of those. They're listed on the student employment website. If you identify as an undocumented student or an international student, there's also some specific information on that website for you. Um, but please know you're gonna need to bring with you original documents. Often this is a passport, driver's license, social security card. And sometimes students will come to campus, have left those things at home and then realize they need them. And it kind of backs the process up until they arrive. Um, we will post positions. Please follow the directions to apply. Please also know we will do an on-campus job fair. Usually it's outside. It's a lot of fun, a lot of people there. Probably it will be the Thursday of the first week of class. So again, we'll confirm all of that, get that out to you, but it will definitely be in that first week and probably on that Thursday afternoon. And there's the student employment website for on-campus jobs. Okay. Um, 
The next thing I want to say is here for the students on the call, here's some suggested action items you might want to take really in that first semester, maybe, right? So one of those would be to activate Handshake, go on, complete your profile. Again, after, after the beginning of August, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you can download the app for iOS or Android. Um, make a career advising appointment. I promise we're not scary in our center. It's great to start early. Again, we're not asking you to do that the first or second week of class, but you know, maybe end of September, October, November. Let us get to know you. Um, you get to know us. Let's start. Let's start this conversation with each other. You can make those appointments on Handshake. We will have drop-ins. Um, where you can come by. We often have a golden retriever in our office, PETA. She's wonderful and beautiful and a lot of fun. She usually shows up about once a week, but we don't tell you what day. So you just have to come by and see if she'll be there, right? Um, and then there's, um, please take advantage to, I promise you weekly, just at Pitzer, there's on average three or four career related events at the Claremont Colleges. There's literally dozens in the fall. Just come to something, come to a workshop, um, come here an employer, speak about their organization on campus, engage with us a little bit during that first semester here with us early on. And then for the family members on the call, um, just some things to throw out to you a little bit. So first, I wish we had more time. We'd love to hear about your college experience and how you chose your career options. We heard a little bit from our president, president designate about that. I got some really good advice from my wife-to-be at the time too, Strom. We can talk about that another time. But know for the parents and family members, know that for many, many students, a change in direction during their college years is completely natural and normal. Can be jarring, can be scary for the student and maybe you as their family, but know that's that's it's pretty typical and, and we want to support them, support them in that. For the family members on this call, if possible, it's really helpful to connect your student to other professionals so they can have conversations about what it's like to work in different fields uh, and get exposure to those. And we've got ways here that I'll just list and not go through today um, that you as family members can support other Pitzer students. We value that as part of the Pitzer community. It also really helps your student to see that there are a lot of people out there who want to help them. So when you help another student, it shows your student that there are, there are people out there who really want to be of assistance. And then candidly, please know from the Career Center's perspective, um, we are here as you are as family members to support, encourage, resource, maybe cajole even a little bit students in their career exploration and planning process. But ultimately, this is the student's process. The student has to own that and we want to help them take, take that ownership. So with that, here is some contact information, um, stuff you can follow us. Our Instagram, I have very little to do with it. It's pretty good. You might want to follow us on there, and we will be happy to see you virtually or in person. So thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Preston. At this time, what we're going to do is I want to give Kelly Simon Parker Class of 25, a moment to introduce herself before we go to the next portion of the meeting. Hi, I'm Allie. Um, I'm from the Moraga, I'm from Moraga, which is in the East Bay area. Um, as Jill mentioned, um, I'm a Pitzer class of 25 student, um, meaning, meaning I'm a rising junior. Um, I'm double majoring in American studies and media studies. Um, and I'm actually the second um, kid in my family to go to Pitzer. So I think that my family, like everyone else has mentioned, is has really become immersed in the Pitzer community and has really become has really become um, a part of uh, the Pitzer community and really loves um, Pitzer and all that it offers, as well as um, all the incredible people that spend their time to give you all these opportunities and who are here to work um, with you and for you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Allie. So what we're going to do at this time is um, have um, all the students on the call go into a break off room and Allie will go along with you and be able to answer questions. Um, but again, this is your time to kind of meet some faces and get to know other students. But again, uh, we're really pleased that Allie is here. She can um, 
Yeah, just be there avail available to you to answer questions. So at this time, the students are going to start heading off into the break off, breakout room and the rest of us will stay and continue talking um, and do, possibly doing some question and answers. And so, and so I just need people to indicate um, who, student, who the students are. Sorry, I forgot. Students? Oh, you're on mute, Jill. Thank you, Shannon. All the students, if you can, kind of raise your hand so Brooke knows to um, have you join the student breakout session. So you might have to come on your screen to show that. Great, I see. Thank We're you. going. <laughs> see uh, he Namali from San Jose who has his name and... he was invited I'm not seeing anybody, any other students raising their hands. Okay, so no other hands. Um, we have one student joining us soon named Nisha. Um, so we'll watch for um, Nisha. Okay, Brooke. Okay, and Allie went with the, the students too. Great. Okay. If anyone, any other students are left in the room, please let us know. Otherwise, we can continue. I, I didn't get any invite, even though. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Okay, Brooke. No, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I feel ready, Brooke. Look. Okay. Okay. So um, we, it looks like we have our students in the room. Um, what we want to do now is actually kind of open it up if there are um, further questions from families that um, want to ask um, ask us stuff or ask us anything. You know, as you can see, we have a lot of people who know what's going on. Um, coming up in the or family orientation, move-in date, et cetera. Um, or um, also, did, uh, so number one, are there any questions that um, we should try to address? Can we put a hand up or something if you want to yeah. ask? Okay. Hi, this is uh, Roy Hadley in Atlanta. How's everybody doing? Great. <laughs> All right, so I don't, know how to, I don't know how to raise my virtual hand, so I just, I'm just, I'll step in here. Quick question for you. Just from a, an administrative standpoint, is there a list of somewhere, something somewhere where it tells me as a parent, i.e. the one that's paying, where, when stuff is due, like when tuition is due, when housing payments are due, when meal plan payments are due, you know, because I've seen like the forms that you, the uh, kids have to fill out, but is there like one central place where I can figure out when stuff is due? That's that's my question. Any of our panelists want to answer, Elena? That's a great question. Yeah. So in the chat is the link um, to our billing and payment information, but an email usually goes out in July um, from student accounts. It goes to the student, okay. and the student then gets to add um, family members as payees in the system. Um, but that communication will be going out in early July. 
Um, if you want more information about timelines and all of those things, I would encourage you to go to our student accounts page on Pitzer's website um, to review all the you know, links and, and whatnot. But our student accounts office is great. If you have any questions, um, you can directly reach out to them or you can check out their website. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I've seen that that page, but it, you know, again, it didn't say when. So I'll reach out to accounts payable or billing or whatever to get kind of get those due dates. Okay, Michelle. Thank great, thank you, Roy. Um, Michelle, um, two, how? Similar mm -hmm. calendar type question. I've been kind of opening all these links but haven't read them. So general calendar timeline, start, finish, spring break, all that good stuff. Well, um, I don't know if any of the other folks want to say something. There is a calendar that is a printable one um, on the registrar's page. I don't know if other folks, I mean, that one is my go-to because we know they are accurate. So you can get one for both semesters on the registrar's webpage. Um, and I just year. put it in chat. Oh, oh, thank you. Ellen. It's a four-year calendar. Four-year calendar. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. How about Anne Torrentegua? Torrentegui? You want to answer, ask your question, Anne? Yeah, uh, I'm Anne, and uh, I am from the Philippines. Good morning from here to all. Good morning. So I have an incoming son, uh, incoming freshman to Pitzer, all the way from the Philippines. So I am, it is the first time actually, it's his first time actually to be far away from us uh, for a long time though. So I just want to, you know, as a parent, I want to know if there are other, uh, there are programs like emotional support or when they feel uh, homesick because this will be his first time to be outside the Philippines for a long time though he has been to the US. So it's, I'm uh, 7,000 miles away from him in, is my youngest, so I just want to, you know, to know if there are programs like that in case, uh, yeah, um, things like that will happen. Thank you. So um, yes, there are there are definitely uh, staff who, I mean, we I know in the residence halls, for example, our staff understands how and like what to look for when to refer, when to connect our students. Um, we have great programs, whether it's with our international students programs that do it consistently and take our students out to that community building that they have in their floors or to help them um, meet other individuals through clubs and organizations and stuff like that. Um, but one of the really, um, I think outstanding things that Pitzer does well is really support our students, especially in mental health situations. So whether it's, you know, home homesickness or whether they're trying to figure out how they're feeling about certain things, uh, we our Strive to Thrive program uh, provides a lot of resources for our students. So um, it is very, it, it is a, a, a typical experience for our students to feel homesick, especially around the six weeks Mark, so just letting everybody know that, that that's usually when the homesickness kind of starts to set in the four to six weeks. And so what we try to do on our staff end is really bump up um, and really be more intentional with the interactions that we're having with our students and getting them uh, connected to either offices or uh, staff members or resources. Can I just- Thank you so much for that. Can I just quickly add to what Letty shared? And I think Elena would say this, but she had to had to go. Um, the other thing is our international students form a really strong community very early on. So um, they'll come and be a part of international student orientation really before the broader orientation session. So there's there's the broad support that Letty just pointed out, but then there's some specific support to international students who face particular chat. You know, it's hard, they can't drive home. <laughs> right. Um, so um, there's there's specific support there, too. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Anne. Daniel Cohn, can you um, tell us your question aloud? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so I have a student who's who has hypermobility issues and 
uh, who will need health services. And I'm, we're, we have out-of-state insurance. We're in New York. I'm just wondering what your experience is with um, students with out-of-state insurance finding health, in health services in Claremont. I have a son who went to school in Massachusetts, and it wasn't obvious finding finding uh, people who would take the insurance, et cetera. That's it. <laughs> OK. Um, Leticia, do you have anything you would say about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if if we can be of assistance prior to a student comes, we can absolutely help them in, the, in that process. We do have like our student health center that is um, that the consortium utilizes and whether it's our case uh, managers who can work individually with your student and connect them to resources, whether that's you know needing um, assistance to get to appointments or needing assistance in finding uh, the care, the, that continuous care. So we, we have definitely assisted our students in that process. I mean, it's hard um, going into it and not knowing the insurance situation or anything of that sort. But I do know that we we do help our students in connecting with that way. And then also we have um, we do have a health uh, insurance option for our students as well. So it really is going to be dependent. Um, so that's why I'm saying like if you contact us or your student contacts us before, whichever one, we can definitely help you so that before you get to campus, you kind of have an idea of where to get connected. And so, sorry to follow up. So we should contact Student Health Services or we should contact you or who, who should we talk to? Yeah, you can contact um, the Dean of Students uh, email and we'll be able to reach out. Or you, if you wanted to email me directly, I can definitely route that to who um, one of our case managers that can definitely help out in that area. So um, my email is Leticia underscore Romo at pitzer.edu. Fantastic, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, and so our last question, I think we'll, maybe we'll get a little bit one more in, but Deborah Steinberg, do you want to ask your question? Hi, uh, yeah, thank you. Very nuts and bolts question about orientation. Um, how long should families plan to, to be in Claremont when we drop our students off? Um, does anyone else want to take that? I, I, you know, we have a full day of family orientation um, on Saturday. So um, the first half of the day is really your student and you moving in, settling in, meeting other folks around you. And then the second half of the day, we have a program for families. And it will, the program will end somewhere around six, six-ish. Isn't that right, Shannon um, and Brooke? That's um, correct. Yeah, so it's a one day for you. So if you need to, you know, if that's late to travel home, then have a room. Otherwise, you would be able to travel home at that time. Great. Okay. Um, any last questions that at hands or else we'll, we can go ahead and, um, I don't know if we have it programmed, Brooke, to bring um, the students back in. Brooke, I, I, I think there's, there's one question, Jill. Oh, I see. Okay. There's a question in the chat and she was oh. making. Okay. Yes. Hi. Yeah. yeah, thank you. My, my oh, name is thanks. Sushma Woodier. How are you? Great. Um, quick question. Do the students have a social media platform where they can connect prior to the July virtual opportunities that you mentioned? Um, I understand, yeah, Elena left, who <laughs> would know everything, but I understand there is always a Facebook page for every single class. Um, so yes, your student will um, be able to join that group, and there might even be an Instagram for every single class. I don't know if anyone else here, and um, we could actually ask Allie too when she gets back to make sure, okay. but yeah, there's, the students definitely communicate quite a bit on the social media. Okay, I'll look great. For those links right now. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Brett. So, thank you. So I'm, I'm sorry. I know we're out of time, but one more quick question. This is being recorded. Yes, so it is, is, sir. <laughs> is how would I find the recording? Is would that link be sent out, or how will, how could somebody find it? It will be on our um, website. It's on our YouTube channel, and so when I even look at my YouTube. 
it come our videos come up. <laughs> okay. Because I'm part of Pitzer. So um we have a YouTube channel, but I'm um not sure if we're posting it. There's our YouTube and our pits are at home right there. So, but yeah, count on if all else fails, you know, YouTube, pits are has a YouTube channel and you'll see um, a lot of, you know, this virtual reception as well as um, past things we've done and future things that we'll do. Okay. And we'll, we'll also, we'll be sending out an email to all participants after uh, the meeting, after we've had a chance to just edit the video. And, and so we'll be sharing that out as well. Gotcha, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. So um, the students choose their classes um, as soon as they end orientation. They're the only folks who are choosing their classes at that time. There are classes that are saved for first years, but it's, um, I can't tell you the date right now. I don't know if Leticia you can or Brad, um, but it's um, at the end of orientation and then they are the only folks who um, register that day, all, you know, the first years. I also saw, I saw a question in the chat about um, when the fall break ends, if it goes all the way until that Friday. Um, and really, that depends on your on your students' schedules. Some students um, have all assignments that they turn in before finals break, and so they probably can leave the week before. So uh, it's, it's really up to your student um, when their last final is due, then in what um, modality that's in. And and we were gonna say the same thing. I think Letty just spoke about winter break. I think if the question is about fall break, that's technically just Monday and Tuesday, uh, October 16th and 17th. But if your student doesn't have class the Friday before, then you know, depending on their schedule and their needs, sometimes they will leave or or begin their break early. So um, I think the students are on their way back into the room. Is that right, Brooke? Okay, they're coming back. Are they all back, Brooke? Yeah. It gave them the countdown. They have eight seconds. Oh, that's right. They have a countdown. <laughs> Should be hey, so um, welcoming the students back to the main room. And we wanted again, um, we only have a couple minutes left, but are there any questions from students that you came up with a question in the room and you need us to answer? Or does anyone else have a question or a comment that you want to make? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ask Allie just to let us know um, what day do first years register? Do you know, Allie? And um, I'm trying to remember the registration okay. date. I don't actually don't know if I know the registration date. Okay. Um, okay. Any um, comments to the large group or that from you, Allie, or anyone else? Um, well, I don't know. I think we had a really great discussion. We talked a little bit about different like internship opportunities, uh, registration, um, orientation, um, a little bit about like roommates and stuff like that. And so, I don't know. Um, I also gave some of the students my email as well. So if anyone else has any other further questions that they wanna ask, they're more than welcome to reach out at any point. Um, but I also want to open it up as well to some of the parents on the meeting as well. I know that uh, I let your students ask some questions, but if you guys also want to ask a current student some questions as well, I'm more than happy to answer those too. Well, we have a couple minutes, but we can let you go a couple minutes early if we're okay with that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. Um, this concludes our session. So 
please watch for the family orientation and move-in schedules on our website. And then again, we're going to send you this recording um, after we um, edit it and record it, and it will be available on the Instagram site. So thank you to everyone who participated today. You, our new students and families, our speakers, colleagues, and our president, President Packer, thank you to everybody for coming tonight and see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Hopefully we yeah. see some of you. Thank you Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.